All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder. Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Sujata Sengupta and welcome to the S. Chand Academy. Today, we're going to look at the fascinating topic of conformational analysis. Now, I hope you all have been following the S. Chand Academy and I hope all of you have brushed up on your knowledge of stereoisomers, on enantiomers and diastereomers. If not, please do go back and watch our videos on the same topic. In the meantime, let's move forward and look into what I mean by conformational analysis. Before we do that, a chota sa revision. Let me see if you can solve along with me. If you want to learn more, please refer to the books by S. Chan Publishing, the link for which is also provided in the drop box below. First of all, what are isomers? You all know isomers are molecules which are going to have the same chemical formula. Now, stereoisomers are of how many different types? Absolutely, very good. Enantiomers, what was enantiomers? Remember, mirror images of a molecule that are non-superimposable. This we had discussed in details. For example, R and S, lactic acid. Now, what was diastereomers, if you remember? Diastereomers were all those other stereoisomers that are not mirror images of each other. And in the previous videos that we have in the S. Chand Academy, we had discussed in detail about the cis trans or geometric isomers. So what are we going to do today? Aaj, we will discuss about what is known as conformational isomers. Here, the isomerism is because of the rotation about the carbon-carbon single bond. So, ab shuru karte and know more about this conformational analysis. Now, what is conformational analysis? Basically, the study of the existence of preferred conformations in molecules and the relating the physical and the chemical properties of a molecule to its preferred conformation is known as conformational analysis. Now, what is this conformational analysis? The study of the existence of the preferred conformation in a molecule and relating it to the physical and the chemical properties of the molecule to its preferred conformation is known as conformational analysis. Let's consider ethane. Ab ethane kya hai? Ethane, as we know it, it is a hydrocarbon and alkane with the molecular formula of C2H6. And it has two methyl groups with overlapping sp 3 hybrid orbit. Now, the different arrangements which are formed by the rotation of these two different methyl groups about this single bond, those are known as conformers. The pure conformers, they cannot be isolated. Why? Because the molecules are constantly rotating through all possible conformations. What is this Newman projection and how do we draw a molecule? Using the Newman projection, well, the front carbon atom is represented by three lines which will come together in the shape of a Y. And the back carbon is usually represented by a circle with the bonds that are going to be pointing out from it and an infinite number of conformations are possible. For example, in the case of ethane, we can project ethane by both 
a Newman projection and also what is known as a sawhorse projection. In the sawhorse projection, we will picture the molecule by looking down at an angle along or towards the carbon-carbon bond. In order to convert our sawhorse projection into the Newman projection, so first we will look along the sawhorse projection in such a way that we are looking along the carbon-carbon bond. Remember, the Y is going to depict the front carbon atom. Okay? And remember, the back carbon is represented by a circle with the bonds pointing out from it. So, and here, as you can see, we have converted the sawhorse projection of ethane into its human projection. Any confirmation is specified by what is known as a dihedral angle. The dihedral angle is the angle between the carbon-hydrogen bonds on the front carbon atom to the carbon-hydrogen bonds on the back carbon atom. In case of ethane, there are two particular conformations which are very special and has a special name. When the dihedral angle is equal to zero, that conformation is known as the eclipsed conformation. Q because the hydrogen are eclipsing or shadowing each other. When the dihedral angle is 60 degrees, then it is known as a staggered conformation. And any other conformation is in between is called as a skew conformation. In a sample, it is going to be the staggered conformation. Why? Because here the electron clouds of the bond are going to be as much as separated from each other as possible. The eclipsed conformation of ethane, where the hydrogens are eclipsing each other, it has approximately 3.0 kilocalories more of energy higher than the energy of the staggered conformation. Why? Again, because of the steric hindrance between the two hydrogens. We know that ethane, of all the possible conformations, two of them are very special, the eclipse and the staggered conformation. So we can plot this change of energy of the different conformations as ethane is going to be rotated. The lowest energy conformation we know is going to be the staggered conformation. And as ethane is going to rotate from the staggered conformation to the eclipse conformation, what happens? Its potential energy is going to rise. And along with the rise in potential energy, will also be an increase in the resistance to this rotation. This resistance in the twisting is commonly known as torsional strain. The interactions between the bonds in the eclipse conformation, it leads to, as I had mentioned, 3.0 kilocalorie per moles higher than the staggered conformation. This energy, 3.0 kilocalories per mole, it is known as the torsional energy. Now, at room temperature, this barrier, 3.0 kilocalories per mole, it's very small. It's very easy to overcome. And that is why the molecules are constantly rotating. Now, let's take a break. But before we take the break, remember, let me ask you a small question like we always do. Butane is another hydrocarbon, but it has four carbon atoms with 
a molecular formula of C4H10. Can you draw the different conformations of butane? Think about it and we will come back and look at its answer. I am Dinesh Ahuja, S. Chand Academy. Se. आप लोगों के केमिस्ट्री के जो मुश्किल टॉपिक हैं इनऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री खासकर उन्हें आसान करने आपके पास आ रहा हूँ जल्द तो मेरे वीडियो अगर आपको पसंद आते हैं तो ज़रूर उनको लाइक सब्सक्राइब और शेयर कीजिएगा वेलकम बैक टू दी एस चांद अकेडमी बिफोर वी लेफ्ट फॉर द ब्रेक आई हैड गिवन यू अ क्वेश्चन I had given you the molecule of butane, so rotations about any of the carbon-carbon bonds are possible. The rotation of the central bond between the second and the third carbon atom—that is what is going to be most interesting or useful to us, or that is what जो हम discuss करेंगे. Now, since I've told you that we will consider. the rotations about the second and the third carbon atoms now i am sure you can draw the different conformations of butane just as ethane had two special conformations butane may be among all the conformations there are three that has special mention what are those one is the totally eclipsed conformation when the methyl groups on the second carbon and the third carbon atom are going to be completely eclipsing each other the dihedral angle here is zero in such a case it is known as the totally eclipsed conformation a standard conformation arises when the methyl groups are going to be at a 60 degree dihedral angle this conformation is commonly known as the anti conformation anti why anti means opposed just as we had depicted the various conformations of ethane with respect to its potential energy similarly butane ke liye bhi we can also plot a similar data so let's discuss the relative torsional energies between these different conformations of butane all the staggered conformations as you can see they are going to be of lower energy than the eclipsed conformation right now of all the staggered conformation the anti conformation anti conformation kaun sa tha jisme the two methyl groups on the second and the third carbon are furthest apart the anti conformation is going to have the lowest energy why because it places the bulky methyl groups as far apart from each other as possible in the gauss conformation where remember the methyl groups were separated by a dihedral angle of 60 degrees here they will have a slightly higher energy compared to the anti conformation and this difference in energy is about 0.9 kilocalories per mole and finally you can see that the totally eclipse conformation what was that totally eclipse conformation mein the two methyl groups are completely shadowing or eclipsing each other and in the totally eclipse conformation it has about 1.4 kilo calories higher in energy than the other eclipsed conformations because why the two methyl groups are so close that it leads to a steric hindrance and this interference this hindrance between these two bulky groups is given a special name isko hum kya bolte we call this as steric strip besides ethane butane the other molecule whose 
confirmation are of interest to us is going to be cyclohexane. Cyclohexane is a cyclic alkene with six different carbon atoms. So let's discuss the various conformations of cyclohexane. There are a few important ones and they are given special names just like we had for ethane and butane. The first let's consider the flat conformation of cyclohexane. Here in the flat structure you can see it is a very strange molecule. It has a lot of energy, 20 kilocalories per mole. Why? Why, did, why is it so strange? So the reason is because it shows an angle strain. Why the angle strain? Because if you look at the flat structure, the bond angles are 120. But aapko ta pata hai? for an sp3 hybridized carbon, what is the preferred bond angle? It is 109. But instead of being 109, it is 120. So it experiences a high angle strain. Secondly, if you look at the structure, all the hydrogens are in an eclipsing position. So it also experiences torsional strain. So angle strain and torsional strain. This is combined and that is why your flat cyclohexane molecule has a very high strain attached to it. Angle strain and torsional strain as a result of which your cyclohexane shows a very high strain, 20 kilocalories per mole. And in solution, the flat conformation of cyclohexane is generally too high of an energy to be observed. Let's look. Now, if you take one end of the flat cyclohexane and you slightly raise it up, or you slightly pull it up, what do we get? We get what is known as a half chair conformation. In this half chair conformation, it will show significantly less torsional strain and also less angle strain. Why? Because in this eclipsed conformation, only four of the hydrogens are going to be in an eclipsed manner. And only some of the carbons will experience the angle strain of 120 degrees. As a result of the lower angle and torsional strain, the ring strain for the half chair conformation is about 10.8 kilocalories per mole. Next, we have the boat conformation. If you take the flat cyclohexane and pull up, there is no significant angle strain. Why? Because all the internal angles are now at 190 degrees. There is some torsional strain. Why? Because there are four eclipsing hydrogen-hydrogen interactions. In addition to the angle strain and the torsional strain, there is something else that is known as a flagpole interaction. Now, what is this flagpole interaction? So, here what happens if you look at the boat structures, what we like to call the tip of our boat, the two carbon atoms, which has these two hydrogens. These two hydrogens, as you can see, they are relatively in a very close proximity. As soon as they are in the close proximity, their electron cloud starts interacting, repelling, that raises the energy. So this type of interaction is known as a van der Waals strain, or commonly called as the flagpole interaction. So overall, taking into consideration the angle, the torsional and this flagpole interaction, 
the ring strain on the boat confirmation is 7.0 kilocalories per minute. Here, we don't have any angle strain. We don't have any eclipsing hydrogen hydrogen interaction. So, as all the carbons are in a complete tetrahedral orientation. Since it lacks the ring strain, it is going to be of the lowest energy. It is most stable. The chair conformation is the most dominant conformation that cyclohexane will be found in solution. The chair conformation is the most important conformation of cyclohexane which one needs to understand. Now, if we can freeze cyclohexane in the chair conformation, we will notice that there are two types of carbon-hydrogen bonds. One of them is known as the axial bond. The axial bonds are going to be directed vertically upwards from the axis of the ring. That is, they are perpendicular to the plane of the ring. These are known, like I said, as the axial bonds. Then we can have what are known as equatorial bonds. The equatorial bonds are directed outwards from this axis of the ring or they are parallel to the plane of the ring system. So these are our equatorial bonds. So a cyclohexane in the chair conformation those axial bonds and equatorial bonds. Now it is possible that cyclohexane can also undergo what is known as conformational interconversion, which is also known as chair flip. Ab is mein kya hota hai? During this process, all the axial groups are going to become equatorial and all the equatorial groups are going to become axial. This is the chain flip. Finally, let's consider if we have substituted cyclohexane. That is, we will have a substituent group. Instead of hydrogen, we will have another substituent. So, for example, let's say I have one free dimethyl cyclohexane. So this 1,3-dimethyl cyclohexane, how can I represent it? I can actually draw it in the form of a cis-trans isomer, depending upon whether the methyl groups are both going to be on equatorial bonds or axial bonds, or whether one of the methyl groups is on an axial and the other is on the equatorial. The cis 13 dimethyl cyclohexane, as you can see, will have both the methyl groups on the equatorial position, or both the methyl groups can be on the axial position. The conformation where both the methyl groups, which are on the axial position, will very easily change into the conformation where both the methyl groups are on the axial position. The conformations with both the methyl groups on the axial position will easily flip and they will change into the equatorial position. Why? Because in the case of bulky group, on the axial position, it leads to what is known as a strain or a 1,3 diaxial relationship. In the case of trans 1,3 dimethyl cyclohexane, both the conformations will have one methyl group in an equatorial position and the other in an axial position. 
what is the key the easiest trick to remember students is that always place the big bulky group in the equatorial position so in general when you have the chair conformation the larger the bulkier the group is always put it in the more stable equatorial position so students with that we come to the end of this topic of conformational analysis i hope you have enjoyed it as much as i have while teaching this to you if you want to know more please refer to the books by s chan publishing the link to which is provided in the drop box below if you like this video please like share and subscribe and thank you for watching